What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Junction podcast. My name is Andre, and I'm here with my buddy Chase. And the main topic today is signs of a good jiu-jitsu school. What are they? Right? Uh, I think I have like nine or ten things written down, but I'm sure we'll come up with some extras. Yeah, probably a bunch of funny things. <laughs> just go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I just... Uh... Uh, so That's the most tough one, right? It's there, a, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of different things that go into making a jujitsu school good as a student. Um, uh, the first thing that's really obvious to point to is: Are any of the students winning any of the local or regional competitions? And you can usually find that by going right to their social media page. Yeah, and they'll have the picture of their team, all the medal pictures up, and their team poster. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can find evidence of that, that at least means that they're teaching basic the the martial art well. Yeah, like the it is a it is effective. Effective. There we go. That, that's effective. the way. Yeah, yes. effective. Yeah, effective. Not necessarily teaching well, but there's some there's some efficiency there. They're they're able to win. That's a good sign. Well, you know, and there there are some schools that you know, uh, obviously they're smaller schools and there's way fewer than none, but. Um, I have a kid, you know, that tra- she's transitioning over from their school, uh, and their school didn't really compete. Their 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 instructor didn't push competitions. They done in in house stuff, and he didn't push any competitions. Uh, he actually frowned upon them, um, and you know, the dad was like, "No, nah, she wants to compete." You know, they went to their first competition, uh, and she got smashed. You know, um, so it was kind of disheartening a little bit. You know, she'd been training for a while, and she has good knowledge just hadn't been tested against the fire uh so i know there are some you know there, there's usually that little hole in the wall that the instructor uh it's super special you know but they, they don't compete so i definitely when it went in local competitions that stuff is is tried and true so you at least know that it's effective techniques yeah and uh it is completely reasonable and possible for it to not be important to you to compete and that's okay I'm almost in that boat myself, but not quite. Um, but it does kind of demonstrate that they're doing real jujitsu. Could you imagine going to one of those? Uh, what is it? Is it Hap Keto that does it a lot? Or oh, like the, the the fake demonstrations? Yeah, like go to punch me, and they do stuff like this, like <laughs> and they flip. I couldn't imagine though, like training for. A period of time, you know, I mean, especially I guess if you're working, you might only get two days a week, and you know, it might be a year later, and something happens, and you, <laughs> and it doesn't work. Gosh, I don't know how how people honestly believe it. Um, I just don't. It has understand. to be conditioned, in, right? I guess so. It has to be conditioned. It has to be. <clears throat> but yeah, so hmm. like yeah, the understanding that they they're doing battle-tested jujitsu it's a good thing um another thing that's very basic and incredibly important is whether or not their facility is clean yeah having having clean (laughs) clean mats clean gear you know people generally aren't totally disgusting um that shows kind of respect for the students respect for each other (laughs) It's just <laughs> you're you're not gonna have the incidences of mat disease. Yeah, and, th- and those will be, uh, you know, it's, uh, when it comes to mat. I- I've you know worked in a gym, helped run a gym. Um, when I fresh, I didn't even get it, um, the last little bit. My last semester of college, I even did a full time internship at a gym, running a gym. So, um, you know, a lot of the the little mat things that you can get, like where you know skin infections and stuff like that it's so crazy because a lot of times you know that doesn't come like man i've cleaned gyms for a long time and you know extra clean gyms and then didn't clean the gym um and it seems like that kind of stuff uh comes no matter what it's really weird uh but as far as like you know making sure the bathroom's clean making sure that you know people aren't walking barefoot into the bathroom like i think things like that to me matter you know a ton i mean obviously i don't want sand and you know hair on the mats um but i've definitely been in where you know we clean where we sprayed the mats three times a day and there was still staff breakout and then i've been you know in a place where you know 
there was a wrestling room one time where I don't know if they ever cleaned. Exactly. Listen, but uh, never ringworms, never the typical stuff. So it's kind of like anything. You know, you could follow the, all the protocols, and there's just sometimes that it, it it does or it doesn't. So yeah, obviously, I want to make sure people aren't walking around in the bathroom barefoot and. You know, the place doesn't stink. That's usually a big one for me is on cleanliness. But, uh, you know, when it comes to the disease, if you're on the mat so much. It still helps. No, it definitely does. I'm not saying it doesn't. (laughs) I'm not saying it doesn't. I just, uh, those are things, you know, if you're on the mats. And I guess maybe that's it too. Like I'm not on the mats like a normal one and a half hour, maybe two hours of a, you know, normal person's class. You know, I'm on the mats for the eight to 12 hours, you know, whether it's coaching or training so I, I just get to see more on the mat so maybe that's what shifts from the way i think I, I think you see every time yeah anything yeah, happens yeah. and that's going to be a different view than the uh the two three times a yeah. week person yeah. um no you're right but yeah it, it helps i will take even if it's as small as a 30 percent reduction in the chances of getting ringworm i'll take that it's important oh, yeah. to me Better believe so uh, especially because uh, i'll have a kid that joins me on the mats yeah. you know i, yeah. I don't want to deal with that either that it's hard enough to deal with that stuff for yourself as an adult <laughs> but when you're like running through and like oh he touched that with that let me let me <laughs> let me clean that now yeah you know, so uh it it's pretty important i think um and it it really adjusts the percentages of having to deal with things like that and the, to me if the instructor isn't willing to respect the space then yeah i don't i don't think that he's gonna have a whole lot of respect for some other things yeah uh and those are important things too but um <laughs> people are complex people Sorry, are com- yeah sure but i'm just talking about some <laughs> no i know i know <laughs> some some signs these are yeah. just these are just signs uh you could be really high in uh, conscientiousness for some of these and low in others, and yeah. it can kind of still balance out to being a good school to attend, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, and that, that's kind of it, and that's why you have gotta kind of go through the whole thing, right? And, yeah. yeah, so you get to you get to weigh these factors, and some of these factors are gonna be more important to you than others. Yeah. Um, okay, so another one that's pretty important is that there's a live grappling component. <laughs> Definitely. Competing, you know, going to competitions is big, right? But you've at least got to have the live grappling, you know, whether it's live drills. And I've seen instructors that didn't think a class was ready to roll, you know, so they just put bumpers up and made it positional drills. And But it's still a, a live component to the class. So definitely need to have that. Yep. If, yeah, if you, if you don't have a live component to the class, it's not really real jiu-jitsu. Um, Because it's it's so it's so easy to safely practice jujitsu, like with the 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 bumpers thing. It keeps it keeps the students safe. You know, it's not like you're you're teeing off for headshots against each other. Not not getting a live portion of jujitsu would be like taking an Oreo apart, scraping the cream out of it and just eating the cookies. (laughs) Like, yeah, I mean, it's good, but like. It would be better with the yeah. You got to have the roll. The roll does so much uh, for your for your your head and for yeah. No, so you, you you've got to have that. That's that's where a lot of your benefits. You'll you'll get benefits from drilling, I promise. But most of your benefits will come from those live. Uh, that's where the growth happens a lot of times. That's where you realize things that uh, you know about yourself that that you didn't realize. Be like, man, huh, I didn't think I would quit in that situation, but I did. You know, I tapped early. I panicked. Uh, and you don't really get that. Um, you don't get that test, that battle not battle test. I know it's battle, but you don't get that kind of hard test if it isn't live. Yeah, for sure. It's it's probably to me more important than almost anything else on this list. Yeah, is being able to actually practice your techniques because there's no excuse for not being able to practice some of these techniques. Like I don't, I don't really, I don't condone white belt on white belt heel hook violence. But, but I do I do want those white belts to grapple together. Yeah. You know, those are very it's, you there should be live grappling. Anyway. <laughs> uh another sign of like a, a healthy good jujitsu school is that there are still upper belts on the mats. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, that's an interesting one. Um, you know, traveling around the country, um and, and jumping in gyms here and there, here and there. You know, there's some jujitsu cultures where whew, I mean, I, 
I think the lab in Arizona, I, I think I counted one time and there was 12 black belts on the mat, seven brown belts, and it's like 12 and 7, that's 19. 19 people has had at least seven to eight years of grappling. Man, that's like 150 years of grappling. Yeah, there's... there's. So uh, definitely, you know, and th- those all... Uh, you know, and I, I chat with people, and, and I, I'm interested in those type of things. So, like, I've had those conversations. Like, hey, man, you know, we're, have you been here your whole – and most of them, you know, I didn't get to go with all, but I would probably say half at least that I asked. I think everyone I asked maybe, except for one. All the other ones, they, they came from at least Purple Belt. So they had at least been to that school for three, four, maybe five years. Um, the one out of the half that I asked, he came from Alaska. He was an FBI guy, one of the – most uh technical black belts i've ever rolled with yeah because it has it has to work against the polar bears hey (laughs) whatever he's doing i know he he not the polar bears the grizzly bears the grizzlies shoot (laughs) yep so uh he was an fbi guy um but yeah no that's uh i've been to a map i've been to a place before where i go in to check out the class because i'm gonna be there all week and i want to see and uh and there's a blue belt teaching the class and all there is is white belts, and I don't know if any of the white belts know what they're doing. You know, so it's, uh, you could definitely tell that that's a place that's just marketing. You know, they got they got an instructor in, and now, coincidentally, that was, uh, I'd already, it was a free class, and I was already there, so I did, I did the class. Um, that instructor, that was his fill-in. Sorry, I had... That was his filling for the day. Well, I was told to come back the next day because they had a. The reason why I went there, they had a Brazilian. I saw a Brazilian name, and I was like, "Okay, I'm going to go to this this guy." Um, and that was one of the best uh, classes I'd ever had. But he kind of pulled me to the side and he upped his class. But he said most of the time his blue belt runs the class. He heard that I was a higher belt and came, so he came and taught the class the next day. Interesting. Yeah. So you know, uh, but uh, that was just it wasn't too good of a school. You know, there wasn't any upper belts and. His blue belt was teaching his class. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that there's a few things that are demonstrated when you have a lot of upper belts in the room. Uh, one is, yeah, you, you could be pretty certain that there's skill in the room. Um, two is that the school is giving enough instruction and community that you have a bunch of upper belts that feel compelled to stay. Yeah. which means that you have an ongoing demonstration of value, which is, that's like a core good school, good environment, good business. Yeah, yeah. these guys have invested years of their life. Yeah. So that's a very good indication that you're going to get sustained value. And yeah. when, you, when you join a school and you make friends, you want to have the sustained value so you don't have to move. <laughs> you know, like you want yeah. you want to be able to get all your community and skill acquisition in the same place for as long as possible. Yep. Right. Um, so that it's, it's another sign that you could look for. Um, the other one, uh, this next one is having like decent class sizes. This is variable. I'm yep. not I don't think that this is 100 percent necessary. And he says that because he's been to our classes at our gym with three people. And they've been some of the best classes <laughs> that you ever would go to. Even the role sometimes it's yep. like, wait a minute, this is these, this is a good class. Yeah, I, I look around. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the lowest level. I'm like, Scott, Henry, <laughs> yeah. Matt. It's a good Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's the only again, our school is uh and it, it, it kind of shatters a lot of that uh, traditional thoughts, you know. But if somebody comes to be like, man, I love the thing. They're like, oh, do y'all not usually have more people do jujitsu every day? And I'm like, well, are you saying every day or are you saying this class? Because this is the – it was on like a Thursday, and we had the 7.30 a.m., we had the 12, and there was 5 and 6. And I was like, well, this is the fourth jujitsu class of the day. This is the 10th class of the day. Mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, there were – Seven people at eleven. You know, seven people at eleven. There were eight people at. So like, yeah, like thirty people have done jujitsu already today. Mm-hmm. You know, so our gym just kind of uh, shifts stuff. We we have four classes in the morning, four classes in the evening. Adults. So we have eight eight adult classes a day. There's eight hours of classes, and not eight hours of jujitsu, but yeah. but like of grappling, four yeah. hours. Yeah, four hours yeah. of grappling. Yeah, and and 
<clears throat> you know, our, our wrestling is, is, is Jeff does a good job of tying it really, really tightly in. Yeah, I would say that it is still like there's there's wrestling in it, but it's still jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, fight, well. fight, fight jujitsu, right? Fight like, jujitsu, yeah, because yeah. it's it's got that wrestling blend. But yeah, I mean, so you you can really so if you come into our classes at any time of the day, if you didn't come all day, you might think that we don't have decent class sizes. No. Um, and then you come on a Tuesday or Thursday night with Joe's class now, and there's. 35 people yeah. you're like oh okay this is a this is culture. what i was expecting yeah this right? is the jujitsu yeah. culture you know joe's class is kind of uh breaking that mold a little bit mm -hmm. um so i like or not breaking the mold breaking he fits that mold and, and that's correct we've yeah. had a brown we just had a brown belt sign up yeah you know so that's the first time still haven't rolled with that guy it's the f to. man but that's the first time you know so, so our classes are growing to the point where jujitsu people are starting to sort us out you know which is really cool yeah uh, the place that I trained at before, like I talked to him, I was curious because he was running a very successful jujitsu school. I was like, what, what, what's your philosophy on when you expand your class schedule? He was like, anytime I feel like the classes are getting too big, I add another slot in one of my schools. Yeah. And he had like several, several different schools. And he would add one, see what happened. And he would he would just like every time classes got big, he would expand. Every time classes got big, he would expand. Um, now, what what I do think about having the decent sized classes is that it if you're a bigger guy or you um, need variety, like you you need to be able to find a few people to train with that fit what you need. Um, if there's a a five person class and you're 300 pounds who are you going to train with the yeah. the 160 pound other white belt no no, no. you get you get a bigger sampling of yeah. the population Makes you're more difference. likely to get what you need so um that might help you um having a lot of students in total is a sign of a good school um, and that's really that it shows that yeah. the school is offering value. Yeah, for sure. That there is nothing that is more indicative of value than people there. There being a lot of people who are like, yep, social yep. proof. That's a that's a good school. And those people sticking around, which is the, back to the upper belts being on yeah. the mats. Thing, yeah. Right. Clear. Um, so kind of related. Uh, women, kids and teens are on the mats. Um that just expands the the selection the family friendly environment Fam yep uh people feel safe if women don't feel safe they won't train yeah if if parents don't feel like their kids are safe they won't bring them yeah so and teens i don't, I don't know it just depends yeah. on, <laughs> depends on the parent <laughs> beat him up yeah. he's such a pain in my tushy <laughs> get, some, get some very interesting ones later but yeah so um that's a sign of a good school. It means that the likelihood of there being a high general sense of safety is higher. Yeah. And if you're and if you're a woman and you want to train with women, this is extra important. Another kid break. Uh, okay, so we had just finished the point <laughs> we, about the. We started talking about women and kids, and I was like, "Oh God, my kid." <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And then the you? kid, then the kid shows up. Yeah, That's it's perfect. <laughs> they they know when you're thinking of them. God, so weird. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we had just finished the 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 thought about women, kids, and teens, indicating that there's a general sense of safety at the school. So your average experience with safety will be a bit higher. Yeah. Um, the next point. To go over, I would probably assume women and kids. On top of safety, like uh, seeing women and kids would probably also mean clean. There's a for the most part, right? There's a correlation. Yeah. Yeah. The same way, right? If you see women and kids, it's probably a little cleaner of a gym, generally, because women usually, men will kind of deal. <laughs> They'll deal with it. Yeah, I remember we had a kickboxing coach. Oh, we have a kickboxing coach, Diego. <laughs> he was like, I was like, bro, Diego, these mats have to be swept. Before they're sprayed, he was like, "Brother, why?" It's like they have to be swept. He's like, "I've never swept the mats in your I was like, "Dagger, you kickboxed. You never was on the mats. Like your face was never." He was like, "Oh, brother, you are right." <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> "Yeah, 
<laughs> that's funny. That's, a, that's really funny. <laughs> all right, I get it. You're right. <laughs> oh, man. So. All right, so, so the next point was that uh, you don't want to sign up at a school that has a restrictive contract because that is a sign that they're not demonstrating value in order to keep you on because they don't have to do it anymore. The pressure's off if you've signed a one- or a two-year contract. You know, you especially if that contract is like you, and and the culture is such that you're like you can't cross train at other gyms. I'm like, what? So I can't figure out that other places have more value than you. <laughs> so uh, restrictive contracts are a pretty bad sign. Um, unfortunately, I think it's still somewhat of an industry standard mm-hmm. to do a, a one year contract. You know, we're trying really hard within ours. Well, when I say we, <laughs> me, I'm trying really hard for a three month contract. When you sign up, three months up front contract. You didn't gotta be up front, but three months. So it, three, a three month commitment, not three months of yeah, money up front. Yeah, okay. a three month commitment where if you're a new person coming in, you've got to at least pay three months. Uh, you got to at least be a contracted in three months. I think you have to. You After should. a trial class? What happens is I've seen it so many times with the kids and with our, you know, beginners and adults. It's about that six to eight week range. They get in that little, the little funk. You know, things get hard. They start learning enough to be able to go harder, and they get in that funk. And then, so, uh, yeah, we're, I'm trying to push for that. But nothing more than that. I wouldn't, you know, because just like you say, Jeff, Jeff says the same thing. We talk about contracts with ours. He's like, no, like, I, if you find something better, you need to go. Like, I need you. We're going to provide the best training for your money, and it'll take care of itself. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Demonstrated uh, value. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there is a value to having like a a small commitment and that that has a lot to do with the fact that jujitsu requires enough commitment to even know if you like it. Yeah. No, and and that's that's why I think the 3 month thing I, I really would like to do that. You know, and for the kids it's almost uh like you as a parent I go to you and I'm like, "Okay, hey, uh so little Johnny wants to do this. Let's so I'm going to work with you, mom, and you know, it's going to be hard for little Johnny in about about eight weeks and we just gotta let's commit we, we tell johnny that we're, we're committing for three months for 12 weeks up front we're going to commit no matter how you feel we'll make sure you get to class three times a week and then we'll make a decision at the end of three months if you like it or not you know and 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 when i let the parent know that i'm kind of on your side there you know and that's the same thing with you know talking to adults like hey listen Nick, we'll hold you accountable you know, for those first three months like you need to be accountable like and then make a decision if you like it but it's going to be you know the first couple of times you're not even going to feel like you understand what's going on you know so you need some time um to see if you like it you have to yeah and i i think that uh people don't talk about it that way people are like just show up for a trial class and then you have to make a year commitment i'm like bro yeah, that's a big that's decision. that's a that's a how, big commitment how much does uh you know along with contract issue that's membership stuff how, how much does pricing of the gym reflect your value uh, and I know, obviously, don't worry about the thoughts of our gym. We'll discuss that in a second. Yeah, yeah. But like initially, what what's your what's thoughts like? Is is that a common thing? Say, oh man, this place is cheap. I might not want to train here. I think that a lot uh, pricing has a lot to do with what locale you're in. Um, so if you're in the the South Park Charlotte area, it's, it's just going to be normal to pay two hundred and twenty dollars for the martial mm-hmm. arts class. Yeah, and and pricing is almost like a a business oriented thing um i don't know if like everyone will have a budget so yeah. so whoever whoever talks you talk to um as a student will have very different ideas of what they're willing to pay well that's part of our selling point you know in our, in our new little thing is um trying to make sure people understand like hey listen like we're we're we're, we're breaking a few uh thought processes here like money contract doesn't you know we, we don't need a contract you know you our, our material yeah. is going to be month by month it's going to take care of itself mm-hmm. you know and you you know and then when it comes that we're, we're trying to take away the, the 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 thought process of uh money or high price means high value so you that's know. that's a that's an established a business con- yeah con- huh. uh, like the do you think it'll have negative effects in in what we do um, with people picking gyms because they're going to look, you know, maybe because they won't see it until they call and they, they come by. And then maybe 
because they won't hear about the price until they come in for their meeting. So maybe that takes care. But like if you if you if you pulled up our gym and you saw it, I would wonder if it was a scam. Uh, like I have, I'm gonna <laughs> hopefully like Jeff doesn't find this and put me on blast about any of the things I'm saying. Uh, but, <laughs> I hope he does. Okay, that's what this is so, for. Okay, so <laughs> if he's sorry, Jeff. All right, so um, I believe that when you pay more for something, you will assign it more value. Uh, so if you're paying less for something, you're less likely to respect the culture of the place. You're less likely to do all of the things that you're you're supposed to do. Um, and you also attract a clientele that is lower income and are also less likely to respect what you're well, doing. Well, we vet. We vet everybody that comes in. Yeah, there, there's, now, things, there's things that's happening. Is there, <laughs> is there a point but, but uh, is there a point where... And I don't think we're getting too far off topic because we're still talking no, this about is, this is picking still a good school. Is there a point where you say, wait a minute, this isn't just cheap. This is uh, this is absurd. I really need to respect this place. I really need to understand this culture. Is it? Did we cross that little threshold where you're like, okay, because that's what, one of my things. That's like, hey, listen, the reason why we're, we dropped our membership is so that you can kind of pay it forward. You need to respect the culture. You need to... Pick up after yourself. Like, don't don't make us have to clean your clothes up. Like, take your gear home, or at least look. We'll, we'll let you hang your gear on the fucking ropes. <laughs> okay, hang it up there neatly. Yeah. Don't just set it on the ropes. You know, can, can we can we transcend that a little by that conversation in the yeah. beginning? Okay. So, so the way that you deal with uh, the stuff that I mentioned before, where people will by default not respect it if they're not paying a bunch for it. Is it like is, a charity is, where we're going to get like super respect because we've crossed <laughs> that threshold, right? <laughs> let, let me get to it. Let me get to it. Um, so all these interview processes and expectations up front and the fact that things are demonstrated value month by month, those are all fil different filters. There is a filter by price that creates the appearance of value for a customer or a student. Yeah. Um, so – when it's starting lower, you have a much broader population and there's a decent amount of chance that you're going to get people who are not going to respect it. Um, that being said, we have uh, interview style um, You filters. can't find us for the price. Like you can't be like cheap you to you can't find our price anywhere online okay well that's that might be different that might I mean, I, i'm just thinking out loud that that might drive it differently because we don't tell you the price literally until you come and talk to me about signing up okay well that's different then i never i didn't think about it until yeah. like right now yeah I'm that's like, that's a part of that's a part of the everything interview it, process that, that you, builds that's built. that builds the value yeah. that builds all, all the interview the talks yeah. that builds the value yeah and then they hear that and they're just like yeah, but like that's that's how the basic like. So that's how we broke the chain. That's how we broke. You, the yes, you bro the the he chain is it. broken because of that. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. Okay. And then and then the rest of it is like an ongoing negotiation between uh, student and yeah. owners. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really that's the way it should be. And then we're really building culture. Like, uh, no, it's yeah, that's mm -hmm. no, what you should do. It ain't because you're paying for it's what you should do. Yeah. It ain't because you're giving me money and I should do it. No, mm -hmm. it's what, because what you should do. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Yeah, that's a that's just a unique cultural element. Those are things that happen with Jeff all the time. <laughs> Light bulbs come on, you're like, oh wow, okay. So that's why that's why it had to be to that point. Mm -hmm. It's all we're we're charity. We're doing a charity service. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's other things that are creating the culture and making sure that everything is still good. Yeah. Right, so. um, that's why I I actually really enjoy the fact that you got interviewed before you. You, you were able to sign up. I thought it was really cool. No, uh, you're, so. you're not the only, I've heard that probably half the people, they, they mm -hmm. man, it's, it's, it's cool. Like yep. took time to talk to me, ask me questions and, you know, and then they get the same, then when they, now they've got the same kind of little process. Once they meet with Jeff and they come and meet with me and then I go through our next little set of stuff. Yeah. I like the onboarding process. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Uh, the, the next, the next little bit here, um, you need to be allowed to cross train. Super important. You need to be allowed to cross train. Yeah, swallow. Your instructor has to swallow his pride. He has to allow you to go and be American free. 
I don't care if he's not American because he might not be. Yeah. But he's got to allow you. You've got to be able to go um, and cross train. Now, I do have some weird feelings about this. Maybe uh, I say that, but I also say that, no, you shouldn't fucking cross train if you're not putting the time in at your gym to develop in your – if you're not putting the time in your gym to develop in the – the, the system your gym is providing and you're taking the time that you should be developing in your gym and going to another gym, open map, then maybe you should look at making that other gym, your gym and coming and training open mat at our gym. That's the only time I get like, we've actually had some, some MMA fighters uh, that, that were good people be uh, asked to leave our gym. Um, and they think it's because they cross trained. Yes. Technically, it is because you cross trained, but it's because you cross trained during times where you should have been developing here, mm -hmm. and you thought that held more value than your development, and you put more cross training time in than you put foundation training. Yeah, I I totally agree with that point, but um, I think that we're shifting the lens a little bit beyond what we're like. I agree. Yeah, uh, you the, you should you should have a primary gym. Um, what we're talking about Just the basic is, is that it. if you're allowed to do it, yeah. if you're not yeah, yeah, allowed yeah. to do it, that's a red flag. Yeah. If you're like, you need to be able to demonstrate as a school, you need to be able to demonstrate that your value is greater. Yeah. Um, and if, and if they're cutting sure. off cross training, that means that you're afraid of competition, yeah. which yeah. means that maybe your product or your community isn't up to snuff. Yep. That's why I don't have anybody competing against my kids right now. I would love to make this a short. <laughs> Nobody locally will compete against my kids right now. We got a bunch of champions. None of their coaches will allow cross training. Hmm. Huh. And it's it's such a small community, so it makes it even weirder. And we're 45 minutes apart. It's not like I would take their kids. I'm like a full birthday cake. They're like a cupcake. <laughs> they have cupcakes that make up my birthday cake. We do it all. Like I, they have a good kid. I see that good kid in Greece. Mm -hmm. I see that. I coach that good kid in Greece. You know, it's like, but that cross training. You know, when you're when kids are not allowed, um, uh, you know, and not allowed. Uh, that's that's in a couple. There, there could be. Hey, you're not allowed to train. Or it could be like every time there's opportunities. There's made up so you don't go cross train you know like I oh, like a soft block yes and then that happens mostly with kids i don't you know like with adults uh i've seen it happen where two schools will put their open mats on the same day at the same time and one school's open mat was on a saturday before and now it's on a sunday because the other schools open, and the school actually changed their class time on sunday to a different time so they could have open mat at the same time so like i've seen schools do that interesting yeah so uh and obviously with kids you know people are a little more protective um, but that traditional jujitsu culture tends to be that way too. Um, I've seen it big time in that. Okay. Yeah. They, they um, have to allow cross training. Yeah, that's it's it's a red flag. Um, yeah. You definitely want to be not. You can't disallow someone from cross training. It's just a red flag. Most gyms will allow like if if me and you train in a different gym, like you know, hey hey instructor, I have a buddy Andre who trains across town. Um, you know, is it okay for him to come in this weekend and train with us? Most places are, yeah. You know, they're 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 super cordial, super good about that. You know, that's yeah. make sure. Yeah, th those are important, man. Because you want it to be a good culture, you want it to be a good social. Like you want to enjoy your time there and you know build. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, the next couple of things are a little bit more soft. Um, friendly vibes. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. If you want to know what the most friendly vibe in place is in the whole country, it's always 10th planet. <laughs> and in the world. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to say country. I'm over here talking, thinking yeah. small. In the world, 10th planet Belgrade, some of the chillest people I've ever met in my life. Yep. Just a good, and you know, it makes sense. Eddie Bravo, that's, that's yeah. his. That's <laughs> Eddie, I remember watching, when I first started Jiu Jitsu, watching Eddie Bravo instructionals, and he was like, listen, I'm really high right now. If I wasn't high, I wouldn't be giving you the best. Like I have to, like that was like how he started his instructional. 
You know, it was for one of his first rubber guards. He was like, I'm stoned out of my mind. But if I wasn't, I wouldn't be bringing you the best quality stuff. Oh, man. Hey, I com- completely agree. If you're getting that from techniques, I'm just letting you know. Because that's where that, that's it. But, you know, that was what one of, I remember, you know, that was when seven, eight years ago, before they blew up, you know, right when he just had that metamorphosis fight with the Gracie and, you know, he, he lost one, 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 lost one, whatever they did back and forth. But, yeah, no, 10th Planet is always, man, just a – the coolest, vibiest people, um, <laughs> and the, the coolest one was uh, California, of course, right, right on the way, uh, Oceanside, Tenth Planet, Oceanside, Gio Martinez. Um, that was the man. That was uh, every single. I wish I'd go back to Oceanside every year, and I would train there for the week I go. It was just the, some of the coolest roles with some of the best guys in the world. They were there on AC, ADCC final. Two guys were training for the ADCC championship tournament. You know, they'd so. Uh, yeah, I mean, fr- friendly vibes do not necessarily mean that they need to be imbibing. Um, it just means that, you know, people are generally friendly. Yeah. Um, that's really important. The The students and the instructor- instructors are generally friendly. If you're going to be choosing to go to a school, you want to at least be having a good time, right? Yeah. You don't – There, I've, I've, I've visited schools that are very, like, dog-eat-dog dog. Um, – you don't want to. You don't want to train there forever. Those are times when I go to those schools where I wish I had like a camera following me around. Craig Jones does a really good job of Craig Jones versus the world or whatever it was, where he went to all these gyms and everybody tried to fuck him up, and he just recorded it. That a gym gyms like that where it's just kind of dog eat dog. Um, it tends to happen. Like usually you'll get, and they're usually pretty systematic. You'll get somebody your belt co- belt level color, and then like depending on how that goes, they'll upgrade you. Or if that goes too fun, they'll they'll stick the dogs on you, you know. And I've been a recipient of five, six, seven rolls in a roll of their best guys, and uh, thankfully, I'm usually on the positive end of it, and I make really good friends because I handle that stuff well. But they do not usually, you know, because they're that dog eat dog. Like, oh, so a new guy come in, he's got a belt color. We're not gonna, we have to show that our belt colors are better. Yeah, the the tribal warfare. Yeah. But you know, gen, gen, generally, they're super, super friendly environments, and um, you know, don't don't take uh, the instructor not being able to speak uh, that clear, or the instructor maybe not saying much as being not friendly either, because uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, those traditional jujitsu schools have a, a Brazilian instructor or somebody who's literally broken. The, the English is broken. He could teach, you know, in his. Barata polata, you know, real broken, but he can, he's practiced, he hadn't practiced much social skills, you know, his, his talking is teaching and he'll have some jokes and stuff that he'll tell and, but you know, a lot of times those instructors don't, uh, they give you a nod or, hey, how are you? But it's very short. Mm-hmm. They don't have the vocabulary, you know, they're, they've spent, just, they got a couple stripes on their black belt, you know, that's all they've done is jujitsu their life and this is their way to leave their, they're, they're making money here, you know, teaching jujitsu. Yep. So. Um, the other part of the friendly vibe thing is that the uh, o- the school owners and the instructors are trying to provide a service or community instead of being a de facto cult leader. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, – I don't know if there's a whole ton to say about that other than if they're doing the providing a service and providing a community thing right, then – yeah. It just upgrades your experience because the whole the whole like m- mentality of the experience is to be valuable and enjoyable. Yeah, no, that's uh, you, you feel that and having you know having a community. It, those are all self explanatory, right? Yeah. Like you can feel that when you go into a place and it's like, oh, I don't like. It's kind of church esque, right? Where it has the feeling church should have. Yeah, or, the ritual. Yeah, like when people come in, you know, hey, how are you? You know, my name is. It, they usually usually have people who introduce themselves, and um, yeah, the you're lucky to be here um, mentality. I've only been in a few places like that, where like uh, they're usually dog eat dog places too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but it, it's kind of funny. I, I love the way it, you, like on our on our little notes here, you got to wrote down. You know, it's 
providing a service or community and it says it doesn't have to be you're lucky to be here but i think it's when when you find a gym that's providing a service or a community you are lucky to be there so absolutely yeah something i just thought about i i really think that that's that's when you're lucky is when you find a place that you're like oh man i see it you know they, these these chat if you ever go look at a school look at a school either at the beginning of the class or in like either come a little before class and then watch about half the class or about halfway through a class and catch the instructor that way because you know, something that talks community is when that last that buzzer goes off and you don't see, you know, 20 people on the mat and you see six people stay on the mat and slide off to the edge. You know, that's when you're like, oh, man, this place has got a little bit of a community. You know, people are they're sitting over here, sitting on the bench, three or four of them are talking. There's people slid off on the side and class is over. You know, pretty much the people that are having to clean uh, or picking, making them get off the mats because they want to sit there and talk, you know. So that that's something I, I look for. I really yeah, it's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. People sitting around chatting before and after class is usually a really good sign. Um, when you got a couple guys on the mat stretching, rolling their neck out, yeah. nobody talking. Yeah. Be ready, <laughs> it's coming. I, listen, Vegas uh, Syndicate MMA, maybe five years ago. Um, I'm an I'm adamant. I don't give a shit. Like if I go, I, I went with 14 people. I don't think nobody else went to the gym that day to train with me. I'm like, I don't know what all y'all are doing, but I'm I come to train. So I go to syndicate and I'm in the kickboxing class and then the next class and then I brought my gi, so I slid into the gi. And I remember uh, there's athletic black dude, fucking mohawk cut, and he was getting ready for the competition of his life. We were the same belt color, and uh, I just I knew it from the time it started. Uh, but the instructor played into it. The instructor um, started us off with, "Well, today we're gonna we're gonna wrestle a little bit at the beginning," <laughs> you know. And I was in a gi with a purple belt, so they didn't think I could wrestle. So I had to wrestle. And then it was like, "Okay, now we're gonna do this." And yeah, it was an hour and a half class that he stretched to two hours, and they shark tanked me, and it was good. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but it was uh, you could definitely there was no uh, nobody sitting around talking. Nobody, you know, everybody was off in their own little area stretching. They knew they were getting ready for a for a doggy dog class. Yeah, and for most people, that's not what they're looking for. Yeah. So, so uh, we hope that some of these these signs of a good jujitsu school might help. How much each of these things matter to you will vary based on who you are and your. Yeah. exact situation but i think that pretty much all of these things should play some kind of role in determining whether or not the school that you're looking at or the school that you're attending is a good jujitsu school yeah. so uh, we appreciate you tuning in and uh, listening to us talk and uh, if you liked it hit the like button and we will see you next time